So today my guest is Camelia. Did I did I say that right? Yeah, that's correct. Oh, I did. Wow, I'm surprised. <laughs> um, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. No problem. Thanks for having me. Um, as I do with everybody that I invite on here, uh, d d if you don't mind, just kind of uh, introduce yourself, however you like. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Camelia, and I have um, a Twitter account, which is where. I started sharing my political views. Mm -hmm. I'm right wing, but also independent. So um, I agree with the left on some things and some things I agree with the right on. And I mainly focus on abortion because that's what I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, and I also have a TikTok account with a lot of followers. And <laughs> Yeah, I've seen some of those. <laughs> yeah, I, I like making um, entertaining content on TikTok. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, you said you're right-leaning but independent. That means that you you do feel like you're more conservative. Yeah. But you, okay. Yeah, like most of my views I would consider conservative. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to, like, box myself in yeah. with the right because there's a lot of things that I disagree with. And okay. I, I criticize both sides. So. Okay, I can relate to that. Like, I definitely feel that I'm way more on the right, but I also don't like to go around saying I'm a conservative because I don't feel like I fit every every box either. Yeah. And I don't like feeling trapped. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I completely uh, agree with that. Um, I guess before we get into anything, um, I, I do want to clarify something. Mm -hmm. I didn't, um, this is just for anybody watching that maybe this is the first time watching this show. I did not invite you on here because I feel like trans men need to be included in the abortion conversation, which is something that some people seem very passionate about. I disagree. I don't feel like I need to be included in that. I invited you on here, like I told you off there, because I feel like it's important to hear your perspective and understand why you feel the way you do about being pro-life. Mm -hmm. um well, so with I, that yeah I believe i think mm -hmm. anyone um has the right to talk about it i don't think you have to be a man or a woman or mm -hmm. a specific age to talk about it if you have an opinion on it you should yeah. be able to share it okay that's fair um i guess before we get into that though were you always pro-life or did um, that change no i've only been pro-life for like two years now Mm -hmm. Before, um, I was pro-choice, although I was never, I never had a strong opinion on it. I just, um, I was just kind of ignorant on it, and I would just, I guess I lean pro-choice by default because that's what, um, I mean, I feel like in the educational system and growing up, I just always thought, oh, it's just, it's, it's nothing. It's just like a clump of cells. <laughs> Yeah. And then it didn't change until I started researching it and I immediately became pro-life. Okay. So it, was, it wasn't it was something that somebody told you, but more so you got curious, researched it, and then you changed your mind. Right. Correct. Okay. Um, I guess we could start off before we get into a little bit more of that is where, or what do you consider, because this is like the argument from pro-choice and pro-life is like when, what you consider life to be or when life starts? Uh, well, scientifically, mm -hmm. life, human life does start at conception or fertilization. Um, that's just a scientific fact. You could um, argue that consciousness starts at a certain point or um, yeah. you could, you could like break it down obviously, but it, it really boils down to it, it does start at conception and there's no debate there. Okay. So yeah. it's not, it's not a, for you, you don't see it as like a, a heartbeat or anything like that. It's more of just the very beginning. Yeah. Well, it does start at conception and then you could argue when does life become valuable? Okay. I feel like that's a different argument, though. But yeah, life does start at conception. Yeah, I guess with my personal thing with this is um, it's always who gets to decide 
you know, what life lives. Um, that's kind of like where I, I lean more towards pro-life. I think, I think there should be exceptions. I definitely feel like at this point, it, from my point of view, it doesn't seem that abortions are taken too seriously. It, it seems like, um, some people, not all, some people view it as just, well, it's a woman's body, a woman's choice. Mm -hmm. Um, and I understand that obviously the woman is the one going through pregnancy. I'm not going to argue that, but uh, my, my biggest question in this debate is, well, who gets to decide what life gets to live Yeah, um, and how do we base that? Exactly. Yeah. And it, it's a slippery slope because throughout history, we've always had that. We've always decided, oh, these lives are less important, less valuable than mm. these lives. And that's just not the road we should be going down. Yeah. But um, do you consider, like, do you believe in God? Um, I'd rather not discuss my... Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not going to get too into that, but I guess, like, Another thing that I was thinking about, and I, I don't want to, I wasn't planning on getting into religion here too much, um, but it was more of um, the question of, it, do you think it's possible to be pro-life without like a concept of God? Or, or do you feel like that creates a divide? No, I think um, anyone can be pro-life. Everyone has different reasons for being pro-life. Mm. Um, but yeah, you can be pro-life and an atheist because, um, I mean, you could say that um, religion regulates morality, but also we have objective morality where you can see something is wrong. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. so I Do feel you... like atheists who are pro-life, that's where they... Yeah. Uh, because, I, I mean... It seems like most people that are leaning more towards pro-life have, I mean, I'm not saying everybody, but for the most part, it seems like there's uh, some belief in in God. Um, yeah, it's, I agree you know I mean? it's really religious people. Although mm -hmm. I, I don't think it should be really a religious issue because there's, there's a lot of things that, um, that align with religion, but also society, like we yeah. condemn murder just killing uh, a born human right which is also like a religious value but as a society we still condemn it so. right yeah no that, that never really made sense to me um but i guess the, the argument could be well one wasn't a choice and the other one was i uh, i would think from their perspective like i i'm guessing that that's what the argument is on that one that mm -hmm. you know like a woman decides what to do with her body versus you, you know, whatever you get into a car wreck and now your baby's it's, it's no longer alive, mm -hmm. but it is kind of, I don't know. It doesn't really make sense still regards to me. Um, but I guess in terms of what you're trying to do uh, with your, cause you're the, you found you have, you're the founder of um, you have, is it, is it just a Twitter account or do you, do you do more with it? Is it like advocating for, um, yeah, my, well, it's a clothing brand. It's a pro-life clothing brand, but I have used it to um, also talk about abortion. Yeah. I have a pretty large platform. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I, I saw that. So basically, you founded Pro-Life uh, Generation, which focuses on advocating for that. Um, do you do you feel more passionate or do you, do you feel like this is more important for you, especially because the abortion rate is much higher, obviously, right, in the black community? Yeah, definitely. I feel like that needs to be talked about more, especially with the um, Black Lives Matter. And it's just unacceptable, the numbers. I mean, it's 50%. And yeah. we only make up, I think, 16% of the population. Mm -hmm. What, what do you think, uh, or why do you think that is, I guess? Like, um, why is that such an issue specifically with that community? I think that um, Planned Parenthood and abortion clinics do target minorities. Mm -hmm. um, and 
you could argue that they target minorities because they're poor, but at the same time, um, they do make a lot of their um, campaign ads and things like that, specifically targeting black women. So I think yeah. there is some sort of agenda there. Also, in regards to like, uh, what's her name? Uh, Margaret. Margaret uh, Singer. Yeah. yeah. And they, I mean, I, it still celebrates her. They never denounce mm. her. So, which is kind of interesting because um, a lot of a lot of what she says, I would think, would be a problem with the left today. Um, actually, th there's that one quote. Um, I'm sure you've read it before. The one where she's specifically says she wants to exterminate, basically, yeah. like black black people. Yeah, she said in that quote that she's using um, like black pastors to mm -hmm. to basically cover up that she wants to exterminate. Yeah. So I mean, just kind of knowing that it it makes me re like, even though I am already mostly pro life, it regardless like hearing that makes me question a little bit more um, mm -hmm. the intentions because it, if. If this is the person that created this, right? Like, then I I have to sit back, or I would think anybody would consider what is the intent. Like, was it really about giving women the right to do whatever they want with their body, or is there something? There is there more meaning behind it? And and if so, why is it so controversial to discuss that or acknowledge it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I want to spread awareness because. Um, yeah, it's just unacceptable that uh, so many abortions are going on in the black community. Yeah, and but do you think? But do ahead. you think? Um, sorry, I cut you off. What'd you say? No, go ahead. It's fine. No, um, but like in regards to the plan, uh, Planned Parenthood, like, do you um, do you feel like they're a problem because of um, abortions, or like, is there anything positive that you see in it at all, or? Or are you just like you feel like oh, it's, uh, it's just from bad. Planned Parenthood? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, they do a lot of um, other things, but it doesn't matter what else they do. I'll I'll always be against them because they do abortions. They're the largest abortion provider. In the yeah, country. they do three thousand abortions. Oh wait, no, one thousand. I think they do one thousand abortions every day. So yeah. I will never support them as long as they keep doing abortions. Yeah, and I saw that you had tweeted something about Planned Parenthood wanting a stimulus check or something. Yeah, they, they applied <laughs> for an $80 million stimulus check and they received it. That money was supposed to go to small businesses. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, they could give that money back. They don't need it. They already receive billions every year. Yeah. But I mean, I do agree in regards to like, okay, Planned Parenthood, um, there is, there's other stuff they do, but it, it is, yeah, I, I would agree with like, it is to me, it is concerning, um, with the abortion. Okay. So like, I, I'll share my point of view on abortion, right? Like, j like way back in the day, I really didn't think about it a, a lot. Um, as I think most people, when they're younger, they don't really think about it. Um, and I would, and I think most people probably start off thinking, well, yeah, like everybody should have the choice or whatever. Um, but as I grew older, I started changing my mind a little bit and thinking more of who gets to decide what life gets to live basically. Right. Um, so I changed my mind and it, it, to me, I feel like there should be exceptions, very rare exceptions, but I feel like the issue is desensitized with this idea of, of an abortion mm -hmm. like i'm not saying that nobody takes it serious obviously you know people do um but i also feel like the way i don't know the, the way that it okay like i'll give an example um uh, i worked um i was working this security job a couple of years ago and this this fight broke out between these two black girls and um so i was basically holding one back and my coworker was holding the other one back. They were arguing over, I don't know why, like just drama. Mm -hmm. And right as it seemed like everything calmed down and one of them was leaving, 
the other one that was in our in, in our presence, like she shouted something to the other girl that was leaving, and it, basically what she shouted was, at you know, she said something like, um, "At least I took care of both of my kids by getting an abortion." And I thought, in that moment, I, I mean, I, and I, that's still like directly like. I haven't forgotten that because I thought, wow, like that is really cold, you know? Um, and it really, to me, it highlights that we're so desensitized with abortions that we're using it in that way. Like it's not something to make light out or, sorry, let me let me try to make my yeah. point clear. Yeah. What? Like make, uh, like make it lighthearted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just, I don't know, it's just weird to me that you would, get multiple abortions and then just bring it up like as a matter of fact not a big deal i mean that's where my concern lies is do we need to create um the kind of environment where women feel like because it's their body they shouldn't consider that there is life you know that they are choosing to basically stop a life and why are they choosing that and again it's not like i don't believe that a woman should have the choice in some cases, I do believe that, but I think that it's important to question why you're deciding that. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, most abortions are for the sake of convenience mm -hmm. and um, or for the lack of finances, stuff like that. And the thing is, we already have tons of resources to help women with that. So. There's really no reason why we're having, why women are having so many abortions. Yeah. Um, another thing I would add is we're living during this time where, and I, again, I feel like this whole episode, people are going to be pissed off, but um, like, I don't, it's not that I think it's wrong to, you know, again, like just to repeat myself a little bit here. Um, in regards to like what women want to do with their body or whatever, like I'm not trying to police that, but it is interesting as well that right now, like we're very big on um, like sex positivity, you know what I mean? Um, and this idea that casual sex is just like, it's not a big deal. And I'm not saying that we should, I don't believe in like shaming people for if they want to have casual sex, like, do if you want to do that do that but i also don't think that the way that we're presenting it and you know kind of considering 16 17 year olds if we're saying you know do whatever you want with your body sex positivity blah 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 without discussing consequences of behaving in that way then doesn't that in a way add to future abortions yeah it absolutely does and I think it's important um, that we <laughs> stress that there is going to be a consequence if you have unprotected sex. And if you decide to have sex, you need to be thinking with the fact that there is a possibility that you could get pregnant. Right. Yeah. Abortion doesn't make you unpregnant. You know, mm -hmm. you're already pregnant. So once you get the abortion, you're you are killing the life you're not undoing it yeah totally do you feel like the way that we the language that we use to describe abortions and and um you know uh, do you feel like it adds to desensitizing it you know when we yeah, say things of course because um yeah i mean they they call it a parasite they'll call it a clump of cells there they'll compare it to bacteria to viruses um and I've seen them do this at every stage of the pregnancy. So it, yeah, it definitely desensitizes it. Um, sometimes they won't even call it a fetus. And yeah. Once you desensitize the life, then it's a lot easier to um, think that abortion is acceptable. Yeah. So in regards to, I guess we should cover a little bit um, in your position, like from your point of view, or how do you feel about somebody getting an abortion at all? Like, should that be completely removed from the table or is there any circumstances where you feel like there should be an exception? Um, 
Personally, I think it's always wrong because it always ends the human life. But mm -hmm. I can um, I can sympathize with exceptions such as rape or um, abusive situations or financial situations. Obviously, I'm going. I can sympathize with uh, the women or the people involved in those situations, but that doesn't change the fact that it's still ending a human life. Okay, yeah, I I think I pretty much agree like 100% on that. I mean, regardless, I feel like it, I don't feel like it's still right because again, I, I feel weird about somebody deciding who gets to live, um, but then, I don't know, maybe I'm a hypocrite because I wouldn't be against, but I, although I, I, I think this is different, but like in the case of somebody who whatever murdered, right? Being, you know, b being sent to prison and then all, all, ultimately um, the death sentence, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe that makes me a hypocrite, but then at the same time, I feel like it's different. Somebody who is actually doing harm to people versus mm -hmm. you choosing who gets to live um i feel like it could be argued that it's the same i don't know if you see yeah, that as a obviously they are similar you you are deciding who gets to live and who gets to die but mm. there, there is a big difference because one life is innocent and one life is guilty of a crime right yeah um yeah so basically in regards to um what you said in your position on being pro-life that would be pretty much on point to how I feel about it. Um, I think there should be exceptions. Um, I think, you know, maybe maybe this is me believing in a fantasy, but I honestly feel like if people were educated more on it, that the numbers could maybe drop. Um, I yeah. say educated on it. I mean, like, you know, like you were saying, discussing consequences of it's fine if you want to engage in casual sex, okay, but these are things that could happen, mm -hmm. um, especially when we're talking about the youth, like, you know, in high school, middle school, um, discussing the consequences of an abortion. Also, I would even add, I don't know what the regret rate is, but, you know, I know that there are, so I would also be interested in, are we talking to, you know, the youth about the the possibility that you might regret it um and what those numbers look like um you know i don't know things like that that i don't really commonly see yeah i would love um more youth to be educated on abortion if we're going to educate them on sex then we i feel like abortion should also be included mm -hmm. um, i don't have a lot of faith that our school system would um do a good job at that because they're they're probably going to teach the pro-life perspective. Um, but if we educated the youth on just fetal, de fetal development, I feel like yeah. abortions would decrease because a lot of women really do believe that it's just to come themselves. Yeah. But that's like the common popular uh, op opinion that's pushed out there by a specific yeah. political group. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they don't always let you see the ultrasound. It's only mandatory, I think, in a few states. Even if you ask, actually, I'm not familiar with that. So even if you go in and you ask, or if you ask, they do. I mean, it's different everywhere, um, yeah. depending on which abortion clinic and the laws in each state. But a lot of times, they don't let you see it. Hmm. I mean, it's hard to argue that they're not doing that because it might <laughs> change your mind. Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> a lot of abortionists have come out, uh, ex-abortionists have said that they purposely didn't let them see the ultrasound because it, it would change their mind. Yeah, I've also heard like in terms of some people are pregnant and they don't, they don't know until whatever, like let's say 20 something weeks in, um, in, in that kind of circumstance, well, I don't fully understand how, how that works. Um, cause I would think there would be signs, but if, if you weren't maybe aware, like in that circumstance, do you feel that it's okay? Let's say for a 17 year old who had no idea, uh, and then finds out 
very late. It, would that be would that be fair in that case to for them to have an abortion? Um, I mean, it, I guess it depends on their reasoning. If their reasoning is they just don't want to go through all nine months, I mean, they're already halfway at twenty weeks. Yeah, I don't really see. I don't think in that case it's justified, but I could obviously sympathize with the woman because she's young. Mm -hmm. I mean, my dad had my brother at a very young age, so I think that in that case, 17, yeah, she should just go through with the pregnancy. It's yeah. a, in that case, it would be a late-term abortion, um, and that's very dangerous. So. Right. Um, I don't know if we'll agree on this, though, but one thing that I do feel like, especially with the right, so people on the right typically are pro-life and are flat out against abortion. But I think the problem in that isn't that it's a wrong opinion to have, but maybe coming up with different about it by that i mean like i was saying uh, maybe educating more on consequences and maybe that'll help also when we talk about like um adoption right because if you're now saying abortions are not allowed well then you better be ready in my opinion to discuss things like adoption then we should yeah. you know what i mean and i don't feel like because that's i don't know that's one thing i don't like about somebody some people on the right and and left that mm -hmm. they will hold this really kind of extreme position and it might not be extreme i'm just using that word but they'll hold this position and they'll be like no i this is what i believe and that's it and that's fine but you're not really opening up the dialogue which i feel like that's where both sides fail yeah i, agree with, I that. agree with that i feel like um if you just flat out say i'm for something or i'm against it then it mm -hmm. kind of um i mean right off the bat you're already going to have a lot of conflict. I feel like we should have more open dialogue, definitely, and um, just discuss different solutions to the problem. One more thing in regards to abortions, which is how, if at all, is there is there an approach we can have where we can meet in the middle between both sides? And if so, I don't know, how could that come about? Um, well, I do think that the pro-choice side has gone um, like way too extreme, like way too radical, because it used to be that they wanted safe, rare, and legal, mm -hmm. but a lot of people now want even more abortions because of population control and things like that, or they want absolutely no limits or they advocate for late-term abortions. So I would be willing to come to a middle ground. Um, I mean, my goal is to decrease abortions. If that means that we have to come to the middle ground, then fine. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that Roe v. Wade should be revisited because- Sorry, um, what? I said, I do think that Roe v. Wade should be revisited mm -hmm. or reopened because um, it says that it, it basically allows for abortion up to birth because it it very vaguely defines health to include um, social health, economic health, and things like that. So I think that there should be, I, I don't think that late-term abortion should be allowed at all, mm -hmm. um, unless the doctor is gonna say that, that the woman is gonna die without it. But I, I think that we need more uh, restrictions. Um, a lot of states are did the heartbeat bill, which I feel like is is. Um, oh yeah, the one uh, heartbeat bill is in Georgia, I think that I can. Yeah, I think a few states did that, which would be up to five weeks. Um, yeah, I I just feel like the middle ground would be um, ideal. I don't know if that abortion will ever be fully fully banned, although um, I would like it to. But at the end of the day, I don't know if that's realistic. So, 
Yeah, I don't think it is realistic. But I also feel like it creates a problem because like we were saying earlier, when you completely remove something off the table and people still do it, then now we have that other issue. Um, I don't like the way that the the approach of abortions from either side, because again, like I feel like it comes off too extreme. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, I don't know, just in general, my point of view is this idea that having a normal family, you know, um, is uh, from a leftist point of view, like they see normal traditional stuff as being just, you know, wrong or not wrong, but they, they look down upon it. So I, again, like, it's just, we put these extremes out there and I don't know that it's, it's helping the youth uh, understand, you know, things like abortion. So that's kind of my take on it. But yeah, I would be, I still, I still feel like I'd be more for pro-life, but with exceptions. But again, I just think people are super desensitized today to, to that specific topic. And it's kind of, to me, it's, it's pretty sick because I still see it as a life. I, I respect that there are circumstances that you might need an abortion, but I still see that as a life. And if you're so desensitized from what you're actually doing like that, that would make me question why, why are we desensitized from it? Like, how is it that we're putting this idea of abortion out there? And could we maybe start the conversation differently so that people can be a little bit more understanding from all sides, you know? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that for sure. I think that um, I try to, well, I try to focus on just educating people and um, just doing my best to lower the amount of abort of abortions. So, yeah, 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 totally. If there's anything else you wanted to add to it, to the conversation at all that I didn't cover. Um, I feel like um, a big thing with the pro-life and pro-choice side is that um, like, even though we disagree on abortion, there are a lot of things that we agree on. Mm -hmm. um, But there's, there's always like a lot of hostility, just because we disagree on this one thing. For example, we both sides agree that we need to reform the foster care system. And um, there's, or or like, uh, we need to educate people on um, having safe sex and contraceptives, etc. So I feel like there's a lot of things that we can agree on and work together to improve and solve. Um, I just feel like people on both sides need to be more respectful. I agree. I think we just focus on the political aspect of it. You know what I mean? Um, which I, I don't like. It becomes politicized. And so that's kind of my problem with it. Also, I don't I don't think it's wrong if somebody has if somebody feels a certain way about abortions because of, let's say, religion, I just think it, I don't think that's wrong. I think it's it's wrong when, because of your religion, you fail to understand the other side, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. The, like, I'm not saying, like, you could have that position, but don't look at everybody as, like, a sinner just because. I mean, you can, I guess, but, like, it doesn't help you open up the dialogue when you're you're like, no, they're wrong because they're going to hell for even believing that. And I'm right. Um, again, I, I agree with what you're saying. We're just very much divided and we don't want to meet in the middle, which you're right. Like, I think that we do have, I mean, we do have some interest or like some uh, similarities. Like, I think we, I think ultimately at the end of the day, we could probably agree. We, we do care about women. It's not like we don't care about what the woman's going through. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, it's just how we're approaching it that to me is is kind of not that great, but yeah, definitely I agree. But yeah, um, I appreciate having you on. Which again, like I wanted to just have a different sort of conversation. I, t- I tend to have mostly you know LGBT topics on here, but I thought this would be a little bit different. And you know, I do follow your account, and I, I feel like I might not agree with every tweet, but I think ultimately your your goal and what you're talking about here is worth discussing so um thanks for your time i I appreciate it well thanks for having me i really appreciate it absolutely and um 
I'm going to put your Twitter down below um, for both of your accounts. If there's if there's any other links you want me to add, just, I guess, DM me and I'll put that down below. Yeah, I'll do that. All right. So anybody watching this uh, in the future, thank you for checking it out. And until next time, take it easy, everybody. Peace.